Hi, welcome to another Coach's Show here on 90.1 KBPK. I'm your host, Ray Baker. And you're wondering why we're not fieldside or courtside or poolside today. Well, we're starting the show here in Edding Bay 2, right here at 90.1 KBPK, so that we can put all the highlights together every week for the Fullerton College Hornet football team and the highlight package we want to give to you. Because if you can't beat the game, at least you can see the highlights right here on the Coach's Show. The Hornet football team has a huge game coming up on Saturday versus College of the Canyons. The biggest one so far they have this year, game number three on their schedule. And if you can't make it out to your Belinda where they play their home games at Chappelle Stadium, you can catch all the action on our sister station, SportsnetUSA.net, where you can join Mark Pavlovich and Corey Nalen, the voices of Hornet football, right there each and every week for all of your Hornet needs. We're going to send it right now, though, up to Howard Sherbeck Field, where my partner, Ryan Osborne, is with defensive line coach David Robinson. Ryan? Thank you, Ray. We're here with Coach Robinson. And, Coach, when you look at this last Saturday, yeah, a lot of it has been made about your first game in over, you know, 600 days, 500 days, whatever it is. But when you look at it, you started off with a big-time rival in Cerritos. 2019, this was a team that you had a shootout against. Very different result when you look at this last Saturday. Yeah, so I think, uh, I, well, I think it took us a little time to get going, but once we kind of got going and got used to the game, uh, you know, I think we uh, started playing well, you know, in the second half, like, uh, I, I, you know, everybody saw. So, um, you know, I think, you know, I think our team is ready to go. We were, we were excited to hit somebody else, and, uh, and um, I, you know, I think we're a little overexcited in having the first game against, a, you know, a close rival like that. When you look at how your defense ended up playing first half versus second half, two very different squads, what changed at halftime? Well, I think we just kind of, we were so excited that uh, we weren't doing what we were supposed to do, you know, a lot of the times. Uh, kids were excited, uh, um, they're, you know, they're, the game was going fast for them, you know what I mean? And I think in the second half we calmed down, uh, we knew what we were supposed to do, and uh, I think we kind of, we tried to pair the the defense down a little bit and then give it to so they didn't have so much uh, to think about and I think that's where we ended up you know playing a lot better we got a turnover and uh, we didn't give up any big plays or, or points in the, in the second half. When you mentioned that coach the pressure was a lot more dialed up in that second half was there something specific that changed there? Uh, no I don't think uh, no not really I just think we started running the 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 correct, everybody was in the correct spot. You know, we had two, one or two guys not doing what they're supposed to, and then uh, so the pressure didn't come home or, or we weren't covering the right guy at the right time. And so in the second half, I think it, we, uh, we, we kind of figured out what we we're supposed to do, and then, and then it all kind of gelled together. When you look at this linebacking core, is there one specific characteristic that pops out for you? Well, I think all three of them, you know, have played before, so they're all sophomores. They all know what they're supposed to be doing. They're, they know the defense. Uh, they know what college football is. Uh, so I think that was, uh, you know, the, the best thing about them. I think Jalen and, and Junior really played well. And then, uh, you know, Gil has, you know, Gil is like another coach on the field. You know, he calls every... Uh, uh, every call that we have on defense, and so I think he did a great job. When you talk about Jalen, on Saturday it seemed like as each play was going on in the third quarter, he started getting more and more into a groove. Was that just because, hey, you've already got that experience in the first half, you get to hit someone again, and then finally you're back? Yeah, I think I th yeah, I think it just kind of just kept refining where he was going and reading the play correctly. You know, so a couple of plays he was a little too wide, or a couple of plays he was a little too shallow. You know, what I mean, and I think they're running the kind of the same plays, and then he kind of figured exactly where he's supposed to be, and then and uh, was making some great tackles, and also had a great uh, a forced fumble in that second half. Coach, when you mentioned tackles, that's one thing that you and I have talked about for years, as long as you've yeah. been here. Those missed tackles are something that just kind of bites yeah. you. And especially in the first game. And, you know, we, we didn't have a scrimmage. We didn't have our first game. So this is our second game. We're really worried about tackling. Uh, you know, we have tackled uh, not really much in practice, but we've worked the drills a lot in our individual. Uh, so that, you know, we're really worried about, you know, tackling. So we're really talking angles and staying inside out the tackles and, and uh, you know, wrap tackling and trying to get all 11 hats onto the ball. So and I think for the most part, you know, uh, for a first game, I thought we did pretty well. Coach, when you look at how the game of football is now being taught from younger kids going up towards the college level, 
tackling has been a point of controversy, talking. Have you noticed any difference from the guys maybe this year versus five to six years ago? Yeah, well, definitely. You know, well, you, know, you got to try to keep your helmet out of the out of the tackling. You know, what I mean, and not use the top of your helmet, or not, you know, try to have devastating blows. You know, helmet to helmet contact. You know, so I think. And, and then in practice, you know, you're trying not to get hurt or get people dinged up or, or so, you know, it's all becomes, you know, where you really have to work your individual and trying not to beat your players up or, or have them have, you know, brain damage, you know what I mean? So it's really important that you, you know, tackle correctly and teach it as much as possible. When you're teaching a linebacker who it's his freshman year in college, never played college ball before, how do you specifically tailor to their skill set. A guy like Jalen, how do you tailor, you know, different moves or different reads to his skill set? Yeah, well, you know, I think you try to make it as simple as possible. I mean, everybody, you know, if you have too much for him, you know, they get lost and then they start to uh, evaluate where they're supposed to go. You know, if they can give him a quick read and, a, you know, have your eyes on your read and then and then hit it fast wherever, it, you know, it's supposed to take you, you know, that's the key. And then I think the biggest thing for us is, We've been saying, you know, know where your gap is and know where your pass responsibility is pre-snap. And I think that has really helped a lot of people, you know, and, and looking like we're going in the right direction quickly. When you look at your linebackers here at Fullerton, one thing that has always been said is those guys are like three separate quarterbacks on the defensive side of the football in terms of calling things out. When you are looking at your three guys who you mentioned just before, guys like Gil, guys like Jalen, how do you teach that type of responsibility to them? Well, I think, you know, it comes naturally every day. You know, we're telling them to, you know, get the strength call in, repeat the call, you know, and then talk about the formation. And so those things, you know, really, uh, you know, just become a daily thing that we try to do and emphasize. And then, you know, hopefully it carry on into the into the uh, game you know it's, and it's also a sign of confidence if you feel confident you know what you're doing you're going to talk a lot if you don't feel confident like the seconds or the thirds they, they get in or they start playing guys who are freshmen or younger you know they don't want to say anything because they're afraid to be wrong you know what i mean so so i think once you get the confidence you know the defense and then you know what you're working against i think you become much more vocal and much more helping with everybody else when you look at this saturday Canyons, a big game that a lot of people have tabbed between Fullerton and you guys has been historically big, powerful in terms of looking at the playoff picture later on in the year. When you look at Canyons, big time passing team, as you well know, how do you stop that passing attack? Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's important that we, you know, that, that we get a good pass rush on this quarterback. You know, we try to get up in his face you know, make him uncomfortable, try to get him moving off his spot. You know, he's also an excellent runner and an excellent scrambler. So trying to keep him in the pocket and get him pressure is a difficult thing, you know, not letting him out into the B gaps or letting him out over the top, you know what I mean? So those are things that are keeping him in the, squeezing that pocket down as fast as possible. Also giving him different looks, you know, different uh, reads, different coverages, you know, and then trying to put a little pressure on him when we can, you know, to, you know, try to get him uncomfortable and not, you know, throwing and just standing back there and, and being able to throw where he wants to. In 2016, Canyons had a similar passing or all passing attack. You guys here at Fullerton had a guy like Justin Parcells who was able to keep that passing attack from getting too far outside because of those reads. Is it similar to this year with your linebacking core? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I think we're basically the same defense and they're basically the same offense, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. We're going to, you know, do the, try to do the same things that we have in the past, and we feel like they're going to do the same things that they've done in the past, you know. I mean, it's just, you know, the players become different, you know. We have a lot of respect for their wide receivers and their, and their uh, running back and their quarterback, you know. So, you know, we're, you know, we're, we feel like we have our hands full, and, and we're ready to meet the challenge. Thank you, Coach. Best Thank of you. luck on Saturday. All right. Thanks. We're with Offensive Coordinator James Griffin. Coach, uh, good game, good win on Saturday. Two different halves, though, from first half to second half. What did you change, if anything, to get everybody geared up for that second half? 20 unanswered points mm -hmm. in the second half. Uh, well, it was the first game, you know. Uh, Coach Campbell spoke, you know, uh, telling the guys, it's, I think it was 600-some days since we had a game, and, and the guys kind of started off, you know, so, a bunch of guys, it was their first game, you know. Uh, and we just halftime made adjustments and came out firing. So. Receiver by committee. Mm -hmm. We talked before we went on the air, and you said, yeah, there's one, maybe one or two guys, but you had nine guys that had over 10 yards receiving. You had five receivers that had over 25-yard catches. By committee, 
not going to one guy, is that how you'd rather have it? It's just Convoy that way? Uh, yeah, like I was telling you earlier, uh, I'm a big fan of John Calipari. And uh, when he had those guys, Anthony Davis and those guys at Kentucky, he had a platoon system. So uh, I kind of just been going with that for the last past probably like six years since Coach Campbell been here. And it's worked. And, you know, we didn't have over 40 some guys go off to play Division One football. So that system works. You know, so we want to continue that system and playing a bunch of guys. You know, uh, our biggest thing around here is drop balls. You know, we didn't have too many drop balls on Saturday. And that's why, you know, we came out with the W. Uh, that's just pretty much, you know, the system here. You've got one or two guys that you want to throw every time. Is there one or two guys that you'd like to put in there that that's your money guy? You're going to come up with that catch. You're going to come up with that big play. I try to tell my guys, you know, their job is to come here, enjoy the system that we have. You know, the system works. Uh, if you're looking for a thousand yards, we haven't had a thousand yard receiver since I've been here. Uh, we had a lot of kids go division one with 30 some catches and 500 yards. And so the system works, you know, and uh, these guys, once they buy into our system, then everything else works. You know, I don't have a key receiver. They all my keys. You know, I always call them, you know, we, we call ourselves the money team. So everybody's money. <laughs> 2-0 to start the season, mm -hmm. not the preseason you wanted. Mm -hmm. Now you come up against Canyons, mm -hmm. big game this Saturday. Mm -hmm. They're a passing team as well. Is that how you want to play this coming Saturday? It's just that run and gun, who scores the last touchdown first? No, I, I would like for us to just, you know, enjoy the moment of the game. You know, it's a, uh, I've been saying it all week, you know, it's a championship type of atmosphere, type of, you know, championship type of game. Uh, just come out and have fun, you know. Uh, this, this game is going to be about, you know, who is the scoreboard last with the most points. You know, that's, that's who's going to win the game. If we come out and do what we're supposed to do and play fullest in football, we'll be okay. How important is it for you to start quickly in that game and maybe score the first one or two touchdowns and kind of set that tone how you guys like to do that in these games? Yeah. I mean, we like to come out fast. I mean, that's, that's, that's our, you know, our calling around here, all gas, no brakes. So we want to come out shooting, you know. Uh, my thing is we come out fast and we run the ball late and Fullerton got a W. And that's the key to the game, you know. Uh, our guys are going to be ready, you know. Uh, we're going to come out fighting. And uh, hopefully, you know, uh, we'll come on with the W and, you know, be that good Fullerton championship team because that's that's what we play for around here. And it's been a long time, and now we got that opportunity. So uh, we're going to come out, man, just slinging it. <laughs> you had two quarterbacks play last Saturday. Mm -hmm. Is that how you're going to look this Saturday as well? Chandler's taking most of your snaps, most of your first team snaps here at practice. Mm -hmm. Trey looked very good, though, looks mm -hmm. good in practice. What is your thoughts there? Who's going to get most of those? I'll leave action? that to Coach Campbell. He's the quarterback coach. You got it. Yeah. Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. So now we're here with Coach Gardner. And Coach, when you look at this last Saturday against Cerritos, you know, one thing that you and I were talking about in practice just before that game was blocking for a running back, something that is overlooked too often in the game of football. Your running backs block all the time, no matter what, and it showed on Saturday against Cerritos. Yeah, absolutely. Like I say, with uh, the pass protections that we, uh, we have in, it's pretty simple and basic at this point early in the season. The key is just being efficient about it. Like I said, we, we take pride in it and that our receivers and our quarterback aren't going to be able to do what they do is if we don't take pride in actually blocking for them because the expectation is on run plays, they're all blocking for us. So we had, like I say, our, our guys for the most part graded out, the, the guys that play graded out. Okay, but we did, like I said, we did have some uh, some issues where we missed some assignments, but we'll get that cleaned up for this week. When you talk about this week, you go up against the Canyons team that historically has always had a really, really good defensive line. When you look at Saturday, is there anything that you're showing your running backs on film? Absolutely. Play with speed and violence. The biggest thing that negates fast defenses is speed back at them. The hardest thing to do is to be coming full speed one way and have someone coming full <laughs> speed back at you. So in this, like I said, with my backs at work, it's not having indecision. Making the decision as to where they're going to hit the hole, what we're doing, and do it at 100 miles an hour. Like I said, if we do that, we should, if I got guys that are strong enough, we should be able to run through a lot of arm tackles and be able to gain some yards on the ground. 
Coach, when you mentioned that last week I was talking with Coach Campbell about your offense, and he mentioned your running backs aren't just guys who walk up to the line and say, okay, I'm going to get the ball here, or you know what, I'm going to pass block here. Your guys go up there almost as if they're a quarterback, having to read out what the defense has to do as well. Absolutely. When you look at your guys, the moment they come in, how do you teach that to them? The biggest is is approaching the game as being a student of the game. It's really what like I said before our interview here, you witnessed our, the running backs were with the offensive line. That wasn't so much as we were installing anything that was new. It was for my running backs to understand versus the scheme we see this week, what are the possibilities that can happen? It's having a plan before it happens. What I teach them is to be able to see it before it happens. If they've seen it, then we're not reacting, we're responding to what we get. When you're reacting, it's a dice shoot. Now it's 50-50, I get it right, I don't. When you're responding, that means you've seen it, you've prepared for it, we now have a better, like I say, chance at making it a positive game. Myself, coming from a back, a baseball background, mm -hmm. is it kind of like that shortstop who has to look at the play and say, if I get it over to my right, I'm going this way. If I'm getting over to my left, I'm going this way Absolutely. before it happens? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Because at that way, that'll, at that position, the ball's coming to you so fast. If you react at that moment, you're already a step behind. But if you've seen it and have an understanding that, okay, this is what then you're responding to what you get and you're always that step faster and you can make that play. Too often you hear college running backs who just enter the college game talk about the speed difference from high school. Is what you're talking about not reacting but rather anticipating, does that help with that extra step? Absolutely. And what it is, and again, it's back to a student of the game, is that as a running back from youth football on, they have the natural ability at that point to just run and feel the game. But as you start to understand what the defense is going to do there, now you're playing chess, not checkers. You have a move before them. You understand that, okay, if the D tackle slants to the A gap, then that means that the linebacker's <laughs> filling the B gap. So I already know that prior, as I, like I say, as recognition, when I see that, I know where the void is and I'm going to replace that void at 100 miles an hour and we're off and running. When you talk about that, that was something that you kind of noticed in that second half against Cerritos. Two mm -hmm. different teams, just like we talked to Coach Robinson, two different teams, first half versus second half. When you look at that second half, do you think that your running game, your guys ended up recognizing that a little bit quicker? Yes, uh, and a lot of that had to do with the, the guys almost literally been off for two years. That, that instinct, that, uh, the, the respect for how fine-tuned you are as you progress, as you go season to off-season, having the gap to where they didn't play a game for almost two years, even if you understand, it just takes a second to get that full, that feel. So what happened for us there is things kind of slow. Like I said, we got the jitters out of just being back on the field, and now we were able to just focus in on what's happening in front of us. We've seen this prepared for it. We've got the response for it. Coach, when you look at, at Canyons this Saturday, you're talking about going 100 miles an hour at someone, not stepping back on your toes, but at someone. When you've got guys who, like you mentioned, have been through that break, haven't had a chance to hit someone in a while, does it help that you guys had that Cerritos game and know what that feeling of getting hit feels Absolutely. like again? Absolutely. And that, and that was the negative of not having the scrimmage in the first game, is that we had to get that feeling in the Cerritos game. Now that that's out the way, that's the one thing I can say about majority of my group there. I have guys that will run through. <laughs> like I said, my thing is helping them understand that the end goal is to get to the because I literally have a group of guys that are physical that will run through. Their, their preference is to run through the defender. So like I said, yeah, I, I have a great group that's definitely not going to turn down contact. So that should be in our advantage. Coach, when you mentioned that, you look at a guy like Brandon who just reshaped himself going into from the last time we saw them it saw him until now when you look at a guy like Brandon seeing how much work he put into the offseason and into that break do you see him switch his style of running going into this year oh, because no. he has that no switch he's the same guy with just the ability what from Brandon is the explosive place there's okay. he runs hard Every time, I, mean, I think he probably runs hard to the bathroom at home. So everything he does is, uh, like I said, is hard. 
for him is that explode is seeing that explosion into when he hits the second level and he hits that gear you're not gonna run him down and then like I say again for him will be because he will move on to the next level to one level is the durability is that Brandon Rankins is the type of back that can carry the ball 25 30 so I particularly don't want to use him in that <laughs> sense because it's a long season yeah. but he has the ability to carry it 25 30 and that's because of the the work he's put in over the year and a half just on his body and conditioning Coach, thank you very much. Good Appreciate luck against it. Canyons. All right. All right, we're with running back Brandon Rankins. Uh, Brandon, first of all, great win on Saturday. Uh, really nice way to open up your season against a team. How did it feel out there to be out there now, kind of against a live opponent, really getting out there and getting your feet wet? It, it was a lot different. Sitting out for two years, it, it's never, never done that in my career. I've been playing football since I was six years old and never skipped the season, so to come out, I'm glad Cerritos gave us a good fight, a good first game. But yeah, I never want to experience that again, not playing football. And they, they were just a good team and they showed us that we have a lot to work on. You had a different first half than the second half. You were down 14-7, you ripped off 20 straight points. What was the difference in how you or the team approached the second half after kind of maybe working out bugs in that first half? I feel like we just need to get our feet wet with the game. Everybody else had had other games, but here we can't make an excuse and say, oh, if we would have lost that game, we didn't have another game that we played before them. So when we got our feet wet, we started to realize that our charisma was going very good. And so in the second half, we just picked it up and we said, now that we got our feet wet, now we can play fast and violent. Now we're more confident in our ability to play this game. 14 carries, 63 yards, three touchdowns. How did you feel personally seeing the field, seeing the blocking, uh, getting into your, your spaces? How did, how did that all unfold for you? I felt very good. The offensive line did a wonderful job, and our quarterbacks, they did a fantastic job making sure that the team felt that they couldn't just play run the whole game, that they had to back up and play the pass, what our receivers making spectacular catches, and. The line just honestly opened it up for me to be able to get those yards. And I, honestly, in my opinion, I think that was the big highlight of the game. Three touchdowns, you're not going to let your quarterbacks get any. You're not going to let Chandler throw for one. It's all you, right? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm OK with him throwing for him. But it's up to the other team how they want to play this game. If they're going to play down, then we're just going to throw over their head. If they play back, then we're just going to have to run the ball. This brings me to my next question. Great matchup this coming Saturday against Canyons. They throw a lot. Uh, Fullerton throws a lot. You, I talked to some of the other running backs, and the running backs coach, you guys want to run a lot during this game. Why is that? They're just, they're a physical team, but we feel like it's going to come down to who can be more physical, who's going to be more violent, who's going to oppose their will on each other. So if we can establish the run game early, it's going to make their backers come up, it's going to make the DBs come up, and then we're going to have more opportunities to pass the ball. And that's what we're betting on. Tell me about your decision making. When you get that handoff, obviously there's a called play. You're, you're going to a specific point. At what point do you have to now change gears, change your decision and make a different run or make a different hole for yourself? I feel like it's, at this point, it should be natural. Like coaches have been talking about it plenty of times. If you can't run the ball by now, then you could never run the ball before. So if you can't see certain holes, that's your fault for not gaining vision over the time. Because the more that you play football, the more wiser you become. And the more wiser you become, the more things that you see that maybe the normal person can't see with the naked eye. So when I think about going through these plays, I see myself as a person who has to think in a professional setting. How can I give myself the best result on this play? Because not each play has to go for a touchdown. But my job is to get the first down. Uh, Saturday, again, we mentioned big game. How important is it for you or the offense to strike first? It kind of set that tone for Fullerton football so they know what kind of game they're going to go up against for that time. No matter who strikes first, we're just going to play our game. So if they score first, we're not going to be down because that's not who we are at the end of the day. It's going to be a physical game. We already know that they're preparing just like us. They're going to have a game plan set, and 
it, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to who game plan works and who can adjust their game plan to work. So when we come out the gates, even if they have to score first, we're just going to come right back with another score. Brandon Rankins, running back. Thanks for being with us. Yes. Appreciate it. So you just heard Brandon Rankins joined by Ray Baker as well. Ryan Osborne rejoining you here on the Coaches Show. And earlier, Ray was in the studio over at 90.1 KBPK talking about that Hornets recap that we're going to have each and every week. We're going to go over Fullerton College football, what they did the previous Saturday, and give you a quick update on where they're going to be the next weekend that we have coming up here on the Coaches Show. So without further ado, Let's get back to studio with Ray and myself as we start the Hornet recap. So when you look at Fullerton and Cerritos, two of the top 15 teams ranked wise in the state of California, according to the coaches. When you look at Fullerton scoring wise, you're going to notice something very quickly. And that is the fact that Brandon Rankins had his thumbprint everywhere on Saturday afternoon against Cerritos. He gets the first touchdown of the game for Fullerton. They were off and running. They had a 7 to nothing lead, and they were looking good. However, when you look at the Hornets and how they played from the moment that Brandon Rankins gets that opening touchdown until about, we'll say, early in the third quarter, it was a team that needed a little bit of a spark, and they wouldn't get that until later on in the third. That's when you would find Brandon Rankins. Once again, Fullerton going with a big package. He's able to pound it into the end zone for another touchdown. Two touchdowns already for Rankins. That's what tied it up at 14 apiece. Up until then, the Fullerton offense and defense had yet to get going, just like you heard from Coach Robinson and Coach Gardner. Here was the turning point in the game. A punt that came up for Cerritos as they weren't able to get a first down, had first and 17, they go back for the punt. It gets blocked. Canyon St. Julian picks it up and returns it into the end zone for a touchdown. That would be seven of Fullerton's more than 20 unanswered points. As you can see the scoring summary there, the Hornets took that punt block by St. Julian and his squad, brought it up to the end zone, got into the end zone, two-point conversion failed. But nonetheless, Fullerton was in the lead for the first time, or make it the second time, and the first time since the first quarter. The Hornets would end up hanging on to that lead the rest of the afternoon. When you look at the first downs, pretty even, 18-17. But Fullerton, their third down efficiency, not as well as they would have liked as we have seen in years past. 3 of 13, most of those coming in the third and fourth quarter. They went 2 of 4 on fourth down, both conversions in the second half. 430 yards of offense for the Fullerton College Hornets. Chandler Galban finished 25 of 34 for 271. 42 was his long. He did not finish with a touchdown nor an interception, but Brandon Rankins, the big guy, 14 attempts, 14 rushing attempts for 63 yards, four and a half on average, 11 as the long, and three touchdowns. He is the leading scorer for Fullerton College at the end of week one. So that is huge for the Fullerton College Hornets as they get a final of 27 to 14 over top of Cerritos. A big second half comeback for the Hornets. And that's something that would be huge for Fullerton College because all of the top 10, well, most of the top 10 at least, ends up getting victories again. They stay exactly where they started this last week at number eight, not able to leapfrog a team like Modesto or College of the Canyons, which will be huge coming up this weekend for Fullerton College. So again, we want to thank the coaches for joining us right here on The Coaches Show, in addition to Brandon Rakins as well. Ryan Osborne joined by Ray Baker over to my right. And Ray, when you look at this Saturday, a big-time matchup against College of the Canyons. Yeah, this, this is going to be a good measuring stick for this Fullerton Hornet team because Canyons is a team that likes to throw the football. Uh, they've, they're averaging almost 50 points a game. They're averaging over 400 yards a game in their first two. So this will be a test for not only the offense for Fullerton, this will be a big, ten, big test for the defense. We'll see how they react to this. So when you look at this upcoming Saturday against College of the Canyons, that big time matchup with possible state repercussions later on this year, you can find that right over on SportsnetUSA.net, our sister station here on 90.1 KBPK. 
With the call, Corey Nalen, Mark Pavlovich, the two voices of Fullerton College football. Once again, that'll be on Saturday at 1 p.m. on SportsnetUSA.net. That wraps it up for the Coaches Show this week. For Ray Baker, I am Ryan Osborne. You've been watching the Coaches Show here on 90.1 KBPK.